time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We have special guest host, Julio in the house. What's on, Carlos? How's it going, everybody? How's it going, man? Not much. Thanks for filling in for Bryant. I... My wife was like, where'd Bryant go? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. He just told me he wasn't going to be here. I didn't, you know, I'm yeah. not digging into somebody's business. If he wants to tell me, he'll tell me. Oh, he didn't tell you? Uh-uh. Oh. Did he tell you? I mean, if he did, I don't. you don't have to tell me. Because apparently <laughs> he doesn't want me to know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe he told me because, you know, I'm a little forgetful sometimes. Oh, yeah, he might have. So, hey, well, let's jump in. Tell everybody what you're smoking. Uh, room 101 <laughs> farce yeah yeah great stick how is it pretty good are you digging it, it <clears throat> it's pretty good a little bit a little one-dimensional it hasn't changed yet but i haven't given I, it I was a gonna chance say, to, to be change. fair yeah, you're yeah. about a little over a maybe a half inch yet. yeah, yeah so yeah. We'll i mean see. you're at the very beginning which no. for me i do like a little something something at the first yeah to yeah. let me know hey we're going on a ride. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm a big fan of Room 101, so I'm good with. I hadn't had this one, though. But I'm enjoying it. So. What you got? I'm smoking the Padron Anniversary Series 1964 in the Lonsdale Box Press. Freaking Jay was smoking the one this morning, and I was like, dude, that's a good looking stick. And so I was like. Go ahead and give me one. Yeah, no, and that's and you did it right too. I don't know if when you were showing it, you were raising your pinky up. That that is what you do with that type of cigar. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's not a. I mean, I would guess the Lonsdale is probably like a forty by seven. Yeah. Box press, it actually makes it even smaller than it normally would be. Yeah. But dude, the draw is fantastic. Oh, and I mean. It's a Padron. Have you ever had a Padron with a bad draw? I have. You have? I have. I've had one Padron 1926 that was plugged. I skewed it, which I normally don't. Yeah. But, you know, $30 stick. Yeah. I'm going to try to smoke it. Yeah. And I ended up cutting it in half and smoking Uh, half of it. Yeah, I've been there. But I wasn't going to throw it away. Yeah. So that's a rarity. Oh, dude. I mean, out of all the Padrons I've smoked, I've had it happen once. I figure... You know, uh, Escobar showed up, hung over his shit one day, and was like, ah, that one's good. <laughs> so that one made it past the draw machine. <laughs> right. Yeah. But no, I'm a big fan of most of what they do. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the funny thing is, I don't really smoke a lot of Padron that's not the anniversary series and up. You know what I mean? Like the 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 series. I'm like, was it really necessary (laughs) to do your entire line like that, name-wise? Well, and that's one of those cigar lines also. It's a premium cigar line. Absolutely. But it doesn't scream it in your face. No. You know what I mean? I mean, I I think this was like 18 bucks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's more than 10. Yeah. Yeah. But you look at what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and this doesn't scream fancy. Right. They, they put the money into the tobacco, as it should be. In fact, I think that's classier. It is. When you go subtle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not I in your face. Yep. Anyway, like that one cigar that I see, like, Phil smoking sometimes, it comes and it looks like a tampon. <laughs> the th- whole entire cigar is wrapped in white paper and then it has a band on top of that i'm like oh i don't know what that is why <laughs> yeah you know what yeah. i mean i've had some obsidian cigars that are like that the whole thing is wrapped up but yeah they do it like like you can see the torpedo tip and then it's yeah, yeah and yeah, the the, and then some other people have done that kind of shit you know yeah. it's just flashiness and i've always said i'll take skill and experience over the flashy marketing yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. Is that a damn dog? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's that dog. I think so. Son of a gun. It's coming through loud and clear, too. So people who don't know, my daughter's 20, and she's also like an animal rescuer. I mean, if you've ever seen the Disney movie, 
Like, dude, she brought home a rooster. Oh, what happened to that? It was what happened to it? Yeah. I took it for a ride. <laughs> you know what? He was here for like three days, and every morning at like 4.30, he'd start cock a doo yeah. do, and I was like, you got to go, bro. Yeah, no. That so the neighbors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the neighbor was like, oh, we love having the rooster here. It reminds me from the farm, and I'm like... Yeah, I'm not getting up at the crack of dawn to go pick cotton. (laughs) Okay? You know what I mean? We got roosters. That's, mm mm-mm. So, and then we had ducks. We had pigs. We had... Did they all go for the same ride? We got... No. Oh, okay. Some of them did. (laughs) Some of them did. Like the ducks, they went on that ride. The I pigs mean, I gave away to a f- actual farm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I in fact I just asked the guy last week. I was like, "Hey man, how's those pigs? Are they still alive?" Yeah. And he was like, "One died, and then my brother bought that another pig because they like to have company." So they like, were the big pigs. I mean, full size pigs, not the little tiny ones. There <coughs> are no little tiny ones. When you see pictures or in person, those little bitty tiny ones, that's yeah. like two days old. Ah, uh, okay. In about three months. They're that big, and they weigh over a hundred pounds. Yeah, no. And that. yeah, it was it was a disaster. In fact, my daughter talked me into it because you know, yep, she has that ability. And we went over to these people's house, and I had brought these crates, and I didn't know they were going to be that big. So I was like, "Well, these crates aren't going to hold those pigs." And the guy who lives there, and this is way out in Potosi, he's like, oh, I'll load them up in my trailer for you. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. We live all the way over. He's like, hey, no problem. So we're driving to my house, and I look in my rearview mirror, and I'm like, that son of a bitch is laughing his ass off (laughs) that I agreed to take these pigs. That's why I offered to drive them to my house. I can't wait to get rid of those things. (laughs) I realized I looked in my rearview mirror, and I was just like, that son of a bitch. Yeah, I, I'd be giving some of a ride too if you said, "Oh, I'll absolutely," take them, you know. Oh, I'd, so I'd, anyway, enough about that. Tell everybody what we're drinking. This is your first time with the old James E. Pepper seventeen seventy six. Seventeen seventy six. It's uh, man, that thing will kick you in the butt and wake you up. I. Yeah, I mean it's not as smooth as some of the stuff mm. we drink, but. But it's got a hell of a history. I was looking at it. I was looking up the history online, and they got through prohibition uh, by marketing themselves to pharmacists. Well, most of the uh, distilleries that made it through yeah. all started producing a medicinal bottle of alcohol, mm. and it actually had medicinal information on the bottle. Right, and that's how they made it through. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw a guy on YouTube that bought a, uh, prohibition bottle of four roses and it had medicinal use on the bottle. The lid was still never opened and the booze was in the bottle and he opened it and he drank it. He said it was decent at best because they used like little tin back in the day for the bottles and so that cap had actually rusted through and air was getting in and out of there. Gotcha. So it had lost a lot of its flavor. Yeah. But I was like, dude, I wouldn't open it and drink it. That's a treasure. Oh, man, I'd open it and drink it. You would? Yeah, I'd have to try it. I figured it's going to taste like shit. But you're, you're but, trying I mean, history. And, but, That's yeah, like... I mean, I get that, too. You're, you're actually drinking a... You know, hundred year yeah. old almost yeah. bottle of booze. It's the closest you get to a time machine, right there. Yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely open it and drink it, and then seal it back up and make it look like it never happened. But <laughs> except for the pictures I posted on Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, I just thought that was cool, yeah. and it was cool because the artwork was faded, but you could still see all the artwork. It yeah, was, it was cool, man. Oh man, that'd be cool to find a bottle like that. 
I was thinking the same thing, like, you know, cigars. Oh, did I tell you about the cigars from Stogie Bird? Uh Uh-uh. The Heritage line. No, 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 no. (sighs) Sorry, Sam. Not your Sam. Sam from Stogie Bird. I'm probably screwing it up. It's like the the new vintage. Okay. Okay? So he is from Pennsylvania, and what he's done is there's lots of, like, old warehouses from the early 1900s that were used as tobacco uh, processing places, cigar places. And anyway, when they closed up, Nobody ever bought it and did something different with it. It was just, that was it. And he went around to a bunch of these old warehouses, found out who owned them, talked to the owners, got permission, went in and found like boxes full of brand new cigar bands. Oh. And then he made it a new blend for each one of them in the Vitola that that band was made for. That's awesome. And so the some of the bands are from the 1800s. And dude, he actually on the interview opened up the box and showed it to me. There was like 50,000 bands in this one box. And they come stacked in like stacks of 100. Yeah. And they were like wrapped in plastic and he pulled that off and like pulled one out and I mean, you know the gum? Yeah. None of it was had ever gotten wet, so it was still just like brand new in the wow. box. Anyway, I bought a 20-pack, and I've just got them rested in the humidor. I'll show them to you on yeah. break. The bands are badass, oh, dude. I can't wait to see that. I mean, dude, I didn't even know he offered that. On the interview, I am I love history stuff. Yeah, me too. And before he even finished telling me, like, we're doing the interview, but I'm on another page over here ordering yeah. <laughs> the 20-pack. And when I pull out my credit card, he goes, hey, you're buying them, aren't you? And I was like, I am. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? And when I'm done smoking them, I'm going to save all the bands and maybe do something, you know, a little plaque or yeah. something. Because, I mean, they're all from the early 1900s or even the late 1800s. Man, and cool. they're so basic. You know what I mean? They're not fancy like what we have now right, right they're right, just right. you're like that was a cigar it was five cents no the tobacco sold the cigar then right now it's kind of the other way around sometimes but true yeah and i mean we're going to talk about that on this show guys we're going to talk about what makes a good cigar and what makes a great cigar and i thought about what makes a bad cigar and we might touch a little yeah. bit on that because yeah. not all not all bad cigars, or at least cigars that I consider to be bad, might not be bad for you. Right. You know what I mean? We right. have different palettes. We have different styles. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into that. Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, uh, before we get into that, though, we're going to talk about the leaf. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, it's the home away from home. They have... I mean, it seems like an endless supply of brands in that humidor. Jay just keeps bringing in all the brands. Yep. You've heard don't rest on your laurels. Jay doesn't have laurels. <laughs> he doesn't know. He does, he's you know never I mean? heard that phrase. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he just goes 90 miles an hour to keep making it better every day. Yeah. yeah. No matter how small. Or how big, right? He's always going. He is, yeah. He he, he makes me tired. <laughs> if you watch him, it's like, dude, you no, need he's, to rest. He's never. I mean, he's never resting. I I think in all the years that I've known Jay, I've actually seen Jay rest like three times. No, yeah, no, it's and, it, very and it's rare. a treat when he gets to sit down with us and actually have a cigar and just actually smoke. It's a heck of a treat. I'll be leaving, and then I realize he's about to sit down. You're like, like, whoa, yeah, yeah, I'm going to stick around. Yeah, I guess I'll sit down. And talk about, like, for a young man at his age to command the type of respect that he has, not because he feels that he deserves it, and he probably doesn't even acknowledge. He doesn't, yeah. But we know. Yeah. Hats off to a guy who is kicking ass on all eight cylinders. Mm-hmm. He's not a four cylinder. He's a V eight. 
No, yeah, absolutely. I love that place. In the last few weeks, I haven't been able to go because I started a new job, and man, it's been rough. What have you been doing? I started a new job. Yeah, but what's the job? Can you talk about it on the show? For Norwegian Cruise Lines. So, I'll be... oh, so like, you're able to sell cruises? Sell and customer service-wise and stuff like that. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's good so far, but that's taken me away because we're in training. So, and up until then, I mean, I spent a year going to the Leaf almost every morning. Yeah. And uh, it's been a, yeah, being away from that place really hurts. Well, and like, dude, like this morning, I went, Larry, Casey, Bill, Sam, you. Yeah. I mean, that was a great morning. Oh, yeah. And it's like, you know what? We were all having great conversations in the back. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to go grab another cigar. So I went up front. And then the next thing I know, I was having just as much fun in the front, and I didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all sat around with Jay. She was like, oh, <clears throat> Jay has 10 minutes. He you know? does, yeah. And, and when you see that, because a lot of times, I never want to be the guy that is, like, imposing on him. Right, right. Because a lot of times, he's busy, yep. and, you know, he doesn't have time to shoot the shit. Right. Even though he will, because he wants to make you feel welcome. Yeah. But I don't want to take away from shit he needs to get done, or oh, at yeah. least you know, in his mind that he needs to get done because he needs to have everything done fifty days before it's due. And he's always so positive about everything, and that reflects on the whole. Dude, story. have you ever met a guy more positive than that? No. I mean, he's—I've never heard him bitching about shit. No. 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 And trust me, when they were building out this place, he had plenty to bitch about. He does. Yeah. And he was just constantly, like, pushing forward, yep. pushing forward, yep. you know? Just riding that silver lining the whole way. Yeah. So, and then Corey, is he here already? Yeah. I know. Okay. Corey's here. Yep. And did you know they're having a McAuliffe event next Wednesday? Is it Wednesday or Thursday? I just saw it I'll on have Facebook to look today. that up. Uh, let's see if uh, J Man can just tell us because I would like to get up there for that. Uh, yeah, it was on Facebook. Yeah, I, I, I just you know. Oh, there you go. Let's see if he answers. Let's play a practical joke. We're gonna say we're from the car wash. Come on, Jay, answer the phone. He's not gonna answer. If he doesn't answer by now, he's not gonna answer. Or he's going to sound completely out of breath. No. Call has been forwarded. Oh, he must be having dinner or something. Eight, zero, eight, six, so we got to leave a message. Five, zero. He's not oh, you know what? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Shouldn't have uh, put his number out there. Hey, uh, J-Man, this is, uh, who did I say we were? The car wash. This is the car wash over on South First, and you brought your truck through here, or someone did, and you have left a case of used condoms. <laughs> and I didn't know if that was trash or if we could just go ahead and throw that away. I mean, I know your gene pool is valuable, so if you're planning on using any of that, we'll save it for you, but you're going to need to call us real quick. That's 325 Car Wash. Boom. That's a good message. Yeah. Wednesday the 25th. Okay. So yeah. this Wednesday, and this show comes out on Tuesday, yeah. uh, it, do you know if they're going to be doing any, like, live stream or anything, or is it just going to be local? Is Luna going to be there? Yeah, I think so. Have you ever met Luna? Yes. yes. Have you ever heard Luna do the Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. Oh, <laughs> dude, he's good. Oh, uh, I got to yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do any? No. I can't either. No. It's like, I'm like, hey, who is this? And they're like, you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You always sound the same when you try to do anybody else. <clears throat> yeah, I've never been any good at that. Impressions, which is fine, because they probably get me in trouble anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody post on Facebook today. I no, it was on Instagram. I you know, I like to have fun with people. Yeah. And some female had posted uh what was it? 
O. It really breaks my heart to feel like I'm invisible. You know what I mean? And everybody was like, oh, what's wrong? What can I do for you? Can I pray for you? And I said... Actually, if you could be invisible, that would be one of the coolest things in the world. <laughs> I like to throw a positive spin on it, you know? What'd you say? Did, did anyone respond? Oh, I don't know. I don't, oh, I don't go back. Uh... <laughs> there was another dude that posted the date on his, it was like a black and white. And just at the top, it said 2001, May 21st. And then down below it said, that's the day that I got sober. And like everybody was like, oh, congratulations. We're so proud of you. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, proud? I mean, if you told me that he had been living like in the circus life and then one day he came home and he was a lawyer, now I'm proud. But he gave up something I love? No. <laughs> I don't go back to those. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> well, I'm sure to get you banned. Go back to something like that. I, well, I would try to be on a positive thing. Do something impressive with your life. Yeah. You quit drinking, okay? Uh, Look, you know what? Look, I put it down. I quit, okay? Yeah. Are you happy? Are you proud? No. Okay, I'm going to have a well, drink no, then. because I know you're going to, yep. There. Well, now you're not proud. Well, I wasn't. If you're not proud, I'm going to have a drink. You know what I did last night? What's that? I slept. Uh, I was so tired. I had been up for like 40 hours. Yeah. Well, I had one hour nap somewhere in there. Yeah. And I went to bed at like 830. And I crashed. And then I woke up at 1130 in a panic and was like, Oh shit, I haven't done my personal mid year review and it's due at midnight. <laughs> so I jumped out of bed, hauled ass out here, and the damn website was having its maintenance period. Uh... <laughs> so I got up this morning and did it, and I was like, hey, if anybody says anything, I would have had it done. Yeah. But so anyway, but I came out here fault. and I had a cigar. Be nice. It is. Dude. I gotta set up my my garage to be able to do that. No, what you need to do is just buy this shed. No, no, no. Why? I got a garage that in the back of my house. Oh, you have like a garage and a garage in the back, right? right oh, right, right, oh, right. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Make it nice, dude. I know. I need to set it up. There's nothing like having your own little lounge at your your house. Like, I tell people all the time, this yeah is probably. The best investment I've ever made. I believe it. Whether it's I want to watch a football game, I want to watch a movie, yeah. I want to get on the computer and work, I want to create, I want to do the podcast. Yeah. No matter what I'm doing, I can fucking smoke in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how awesome that is? I know. I, uh, and what's the temperature in here? Perfect. What is it? 67? 67, yeah. 67 degrees. Yeah. Hey, y'all, y'all be glad that I had, oh, when I brought home this cigar, I came home and I was like, you know, I got a busy evening. I might take a little nap. But I was like, oh, before I do that, though, I need to go put this cigar in my humidor. Yeah. Came out here and I had forgotten that I had turned both ACs off. Uh, so it's hot as heck in here. No, it was 77. Oh, it was a nice day today. But by the time you guys got here, it would have been about 85. Uh, and that's no bueno. No. No. But yeah, every cigar smoker needs their own spot to smoke at home. It's just, it's mental health-wise, escaping all your family stuff. It's it's nice. Well, you know, there's lots of times where I tell my wife, I'm like, you know, I know I smoke cigars all day. But I'm going to go out right now and smoke another one just to relax. Yeah. Because I'm not always in that mode to just relax and enjoy right. the cigar. Right. A lot of times I'm multitasking, working, taking calls, whatever. Yeah. Yep. And so I enjoy it 
but I don't get to really take it in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah. people can ask me, what'd you smoke today? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because you're not paying attention to it. And it really is nice to sit down and experience a cigar. You know where the best place is? What do you need, bro? No, I was same oh. with whiskey and bourbon. Absolutely. You know, I've never, like, five or six years ago, no, seven years ago, I didn't drink bourbon. Yeah. I was a <clears throat> beer guy and really not that much beer. Yeah. I was never a liquor guy, and mainly because whenever I was young, you know, we would get our hands on a bottle of Jack Daniels and just do shots to get drunk. Yeah. Cause you know, you're like 19. Right. And after all that, I was like, Jack Daniels is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't stand Jack Daniels now. No. I will say I really, really enjoyed the uncle nearest. Have you ever had that? No, I haven't. <clears throat> you know the story behind that? So I don't remember the guy's name. Right. I guess nearest, it was nearest. I think it was nearest Jackson. Nearest Jackson. Okay. Anyway, the Jack Daniels was was it slave owners or was it nearest Jackson or nearest whatever, whatever his last name nearest was. Jackson? I think it was Jackson. He taught Jack Daniels how. To yeah, distill. he taught Jack Daniels how to be a distiller. Sure, but. Then he used nearest recipe and didn't give him credit for oh, it. Made right. the money from it. Right. Well, then, what well, what what decade was it? Whenever uh, Jack Daniels made it right. I mean, I want to say it was in the last ten to fifteen years. Wow. They found yeah, they found his family and was like, hey, you know what? This belongs to y'all, and now they own it. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. And I really love the brand and it's good. Yeah. It's a little pricey. That's why I don't buy it very often. I mean, right. you know, it's good, but it's, you know, 53 to 56 bucks. Okay. Yeah. This is 36. And it's like a little bit better than this. Not $25 better. Right. Yeah, it's the history of it. Yeah, 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 and I'm and I'm I'm cool. I'm down with that. Yeah. So if you're in the market for any cigars, call the Leaf. The oh, yeah. number is down in the show notes, and that was one promo. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's like, I don't remember you ever mentioning the Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, dude. You need some cigars. Yeah. Call them up. The numbers in the show notes, and if you're Within 50 to 100 miles of the leaf, it is worth your effort and time to come hang out at the leaf and smoke a cigar. Don't just swing in, run in the humidor, be amazed, buy cigars, and leave. You know what? I know you're on the road. Yeah. But take an hour out of your day, even if you're on the road to take it in. Yeah, and then everybody will welcome you there. I mean, we've been sitting there so many times and someone's came in and uh sat down and we've invited them to talk with us and we've got to know a lot of cool people. Yeah, it's it's awesome to meet people that are passing through. Yeah. Where are you going? Where are you from? What are you doing up there? What do you do back there? Yep. Yeah, it's an awesome place. Do you like midget porn? <laughs> That's a big no for me. And when I say big, <laughs> Larry's giving the aisle, move on, move on. <laughs> I came from that conversation this morning. <laughs> so anyway, uh, our other sponsors, Case Elegance. Okay. Can't say enough about those guys. I mean, I got an email from a guy who listens to the show that says, hey, man, I know you always like to hear about your sponsors and whether or not they're pulling their weight. Yeah. Basically, he didn't say that, but I paraphrased into a Southern Tennessee man's choice of words. But anyway, he was like, yeah, the humidor is fantastic. I had something, blum, blum, blum. And he called them. They sent him something, blah, blah, blah. And then 
he had taken the uh, hygrometer out. Yeah. And, you know, it's fitted in there with like a grommet all the way around, like an O-ring right. type thing. Anyway, he said he couldn't get it back in the way it should be. And every time he would close the lid, it would actually, the, the pressure would blow it out. Yes, I've had that happen on mine. And on your case elegance? No, no, no. I don't have oh, a case elegance. Okay. my regular. Humidor. Okay. So anyway, he called and told them. Yep. And they were like, nah, send him another one. Boom. Done. Wow. Not, not the hygrometer. The a new thing. humidor. Dang. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Dude, who does that? Nobody. And I don't own one, but after seeing you cut it in half, that was impressive. Dude. In fact, I was talking to a guy just two nights ago, and he was like, hey, man, how do you season a humidor? Yeah. I was like, why, you got one? He's like, yeah. And I was like, well, how much do you smoke? I mean, do you even need one? And he was like, you know, I want to have about 25 cigars in there, okay. and I'll probably smoke three to four a month. And I was like, actually, that's perfect. Yeah. And I was like, what kind of humidor do you have? And he was like, I don't know. It was like 50 bucks. It was from Famous Cigars. And I was like, yeah, that sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't have to see it. <clears throat> it's 50 bucks. Yeah. I know it sucks because yeah. I've cut one in half that, cost twice that yeah the one i cut in half that had no wood was 130 bucks whoa i thought that was like a 60 dollar no was. no well i sure see sure i mean look like it that, it, it was 130 bucks that the case no elegance being that much the one that's similar in design yeah so theirs is 130 bucks that one was 130 bucks this one has cedar this one has paper that looks like cedar. That I mean, you could you couldn't even see the cedar. No, it like but, it was sprayed but it, on. if you look down, it looks like cedar. But when you looked at it like yeah. horizontally, you were like, "There's no wood." No, I mean, it was no. it it it's like a puzzle. You know, like when they print a puzzle, <laughs> that's how thick the wood was. Yeah, there is no wood. Look like they figured out a way to spray. Wood. That did I tell you about the hygrometers? In the case elegance? In both of those, I oh, cut. Oh, no, no. So I took both of the hygrometers out. I yeah. put it in my humidor oh, yeah. that has its own hygrometer. Yeah. And my hygrometer said 70. The case elegance went to 69. The uh, cheap brand, it wasn't cheap. It was the same price, yeah. but the bullshit brand, their hygrometer said 83. Oh, yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, but think about it. If my case leaks and doesn't hold humidity, yeah, and it's thirteen points, fourteen points above what it should be, you think your cigars are safe? Yeah, no, yeah, no, and <clears throat> and really the the practice has been when you get any humidor, you toss the one that comes with the box because it's almost always trash. But I guess Case Elegance has found oh, a good dude, one dude. to actually include with theirs. No, they didn't find a good one. They created it. Oh, okay. They make their own. They make their own. Ah, that's why. And when you get it, yeah. it comes with two bottles. One for your dry climate and yeah. one for your humid climate. Oh. And you might be in a climate that's normally humid. Yeah. So you use the humid. But then in the dead of winter, yeah. it's not as humid. Right. So you can use the other one. Interesting. Oh, dude. Oh, that's a touch of detail. They... Yeah. They've thought it through. Yeah. And literally, they have a, like, six-box picture book with, like, kindergarten words on it. <laughs> like, you can't screw it right, up. Right, right. That's good. That's it was good. the first time I ever successfully humidified a humidor yeah. on my own. Yeah. Like, you know, I wiped down the wood and bought different kind of gel beads and whatever, yeah. and I was never good at it. With Case Elegance, I don't have to be good at it because it basically does it for right. you. Right, yeah. And, you know, Presley bought one just like four or five weeks ago. Okay. He got the same one Bryant has, which is the military yeah. footlocker with the glass top. Yeah. And, I mean, he's like, wow. In fact, he was reading all the reviews and the people were just going nuts. Like, yeah. this is a value. Right. And, you know, what's funny is when Case Elegance came on the scene... 
they were trying to compete price wise. So they got on Amazon, and I mean, you could buy a hundred count cigar humidor for fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. And so they tried to compete at that, but they couldn't. Yeah. Because when you're getting real wood, you can't do a fifty dollar humidor. Right. So they upped the price to a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty, somewhere in there. And all the shitty humidors didn't like follow suit and build better humidors. They just raised the price to equal what Case Elegance was. Oh man. Right. Yeah, because I, I never would have thought that humidor that you cut in half was $130. Right. I, I really thought that was a $50 one half Amazon. Well. How is the farce? It's good. Yeah, it's gotten better. Okay. Smooth. It's, the burn's a little inconsistent. I've had to touch it up here and there, but. My burn's been like well, spot on. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a talking Honda Civic to Rolls. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> if you're in need of anything that Case Elegance sells, and I like to call them like they carry man stuff. Have you ever seen my leather bag? I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. Remind me on break and I will go get it. Yeah. I've told Larry that 50 times yeah. and nobody reminds me and I don't go get it. Yeah. But dude, it's like they bring they they have the leather brought in from like Italy or something. Oh, that's somewhere nice. over there. Like their leather is whoo. Yeah. It's 150 bucks. Yeah. That's cheap. That is cheap for good leather. And if you use the what is it? The code yeah. cigar talk coin, they'll give you 10% off. They'll send you the coin. And that's a cool coin. I oh, was dude, with it. That's earlier. a badass coin. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. And I'm always looking to do new ones, but that one was a hit. That's a good coin. Now, did you see the original that was color on my side and their side? It was like we had the blue, they had the white and the tan and the black. Oh, no, I never saw that one. I've got one around here somewhere. I'll show it to you. But no, the I was just, you know, they came out with the military black, the blackout edition. Gotcha. And I was like, let's do a blackout coin. They're like, cool. Design it. Send it over. And I was like, nice. sweet. That's what I love about Case Elgins, man. They're always ready to do something fun. Oh, they care about the customer. And then the customer experience. Oh, and like that is not. Oh, dude. Do you know Z-Man, Zeka? I've heard of him. I don't okay. know him. But. So he bought the one that looked like a, it was white on the bottom and the lid was black. And it's like piano shine. Oh, beautiful. And anyway... He sent me a picture one day, and he was like, dude, check this out. Well, the bottom had separated and split. Oh. And I was like, ooh, that's not what you want to see. Yeah. Case Elegance, you know, kind of let me down there. And so, anyway, he messaged me back and was like, it was my fault. I was Uh, like, why? He had spilt water in there. And it absorbed uh, into the yeah, wood, it and it it expanded. Yeah. So he, but he sent them a picture, and they were like, "Oh, wow! I can't believe that happened. What do you think caused it?" Blah blah. And anyway, he came back and said, "I screwed up. I now see because there was water stains yeah. where he had spilt the water in there." Yeah. They sent him a new one. Wow. It wasn't their fault. Yeah. But still, it's that customer experience. I mean, he'll tell everybody else that. And so few companies realize how important the customer experience is. I I mean, I think on most companies, that's been lost. Oh, absolutely. They sell you a product and they're done with you. Right. They never want to hear from you again. Right. Even, even the guys that are selling you a subscription. Yeah. Like, Suddenlink, like, they don't check in with you. Right. They don't see how your service is. No. Oh. They don't even want to talk to you when no. you call them. <laughs> Whenever I called and canceled to go with Vexus, yeah. I had to talk like five managers so I could quit. Yeah. And they were like, well, Mr. Jones, we really value your customers. You've been with us forever. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, I called about six months ago and asked why I'm paying 164 yeah. and my buddy's paying 80. 
for the same service. And they were like, oh, well, that's for new customers only. And I was like, well, no one cared. You say thank you for being here for eight years, but really, yeah, you don't yeah. care until I say I'm leaving. Yeah. And then Vexus sucks, so I came back. Right, right. Well, yeah. Now, Bryant, choice. Bryant has Vexus, and he says there have been lights out for him. I, everyone I've talked to has hated it. You know why? You know what was interesting was it was fiber optic. Mm -hmm. When it was on, it was badass. Yeah. But you remember last year how rainy it was? Yep. Every time you had a good hard rain, you didn't have internet for two to three days. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, I can't do that. No, you might as well have satellite internet. And so one one of those outages, literally, I didn't have internet for three days. Jeez. On the third day, I called. And it rang like, I don't know, like 12 times. Yeah. And I hear this. Uh, uh, thank you for calling Vexus. And it's like a 70-year-old woman. <laughs> And I'm like, um, is this customer support? And she's like, oh, yeah. I I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, now you can't be an asshole right. to this 70-year-old right, woman. Right, you know what right, I mean? He's right. like, I'm not going to go off on you. Right. I was ready to go off on somebody, but all right. <laughs> it's not her fault. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, I mean, she's at home. Right. She's not on an office phone. Her phone rings and she answers it. Right. Yeah. And so anyway, I got out from underneath them. I've heard they've improved their network, but I don't know. You know, right now, suddenly it's giving me a great deal because I came back. So it's as long as I have that deal, I'm golden. But you raise my rate, I'm out of here. It's the lesser of two evils. It is. Unfortunately. That's, that, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's what we face in small towns. We got monopolies and nobody does anything about it. So, anyway, uh, we'll get to our other sponsors after the break, but let's dive into what makes a good cigar. Okay. Like, what is it? I think everybody has, like, a checkoff list in their brain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. And we don't all like the same, but it's like I look for price point. On a new cigar I'm going to smoke for the first time, price point comes into play. Absolutely. If you're a brand I've never heard of and you're $14, there's a good chance I'm not going to smoke it. Right. If you're a brand that I know and you come out with a $14, $16 cigar, I'm like, I know they make quality. I'm yep. going to give it a try. Yep. And if it's good, I don't think twice about spending $14, 16 bucks. Right. If it's not good, I'm like... Never smoking that again. Yeah. But that's kind of like the leeway people with experience have to charge that. Yeah. But when you get down to it, price isn't a indicator of a good cigar. No, absolutely isn't. It's far from it. So, I mean, you can throw that out the yep. window because that's not part of the equation. Now, granted... You spend two bucks on a cigar, you're smoking a two dollar cigar. Right. Don't try to tell me it's like a fifteen dollar cigar. Yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just I'm not saying price has anything to do with making it a good cigar, but some prices are so low that it, it is a representative of a bad cigar. Yeah, yeah. You know you're getting I don't know if you ever knew five thirty Fred. No. So he passed. I've away. heard of him. Anyway. Yeah. Every day at 5.30, he would come walking in, and he, the cigar that he smoked was $2.30. I would give him a really good cigar, and he would love it. And then he would go right back to smoking $2.30 <laughs> cigars. Well, that's the beauty. There's a price range for everybody. Absolutely. And if you don't want to spend money, you can start out at the lower price cigars and have a decent experience and then move up from there. Or never leave it. Get used to what you're smoking. That's just what you smoke. Well, 530 Fred was more of a drinker oh. than he was a smoker. Okay. But 
he did enjoy smoking cigars while he was having the bourbon. Right. He was a great guy. Him and Ed, uh, great conversations. He was, uh, 530 Fred was German. He was from Germany. He came over here and joined the military, went to war, came back, never got his paperwork done. So technically, he was illegal. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was always like paranoid about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, you're 70. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Man, yeah, I've had some good conversations with Ed. One day you'll get him to do the show. One day. <laughs> you got to wait till he retires. <laughs> He's he has a reputation to uphold for now because the, the the stuff in his head, man. Ah, oh, jeez, what a treasure! Right? What a treasure! Like, don't you wish they had technology that we could just download like brains like that? Oh, it'd take me a lifetime to go through something like that. It's man, his conversations, and he'll talk about anything, oh. and is knowledgeable on everything. I mean. That's because he's been around for so long. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. 72, 73. Yeah. But you know, most people that age, I mean, they, they won't, they don't feel comfortable talking about technology, things like that. He oh, is in he, his element. Yo, he, dude. He, it's, and it could be computers, laptops, stereos, wireless systems. Like, you know, he has the speaker system, the Sonus. Yeah, Sonus. Okay. You know, it's all yeah. wireless. Yeah. It's voice reactive. Yeah. And... It's like, dude, you're like cutting edge. Yeah, he is. He is. He talks to me about technology all the time. We have some great conversations about that. Good dude. Ed. Yeah, he is. You know, he's gonna be back for like two months I know. or more. Yeah, it sucks. You break my heart. Yeah, like, it's... I'll be gone all summer. It's like, ah, leave. I'm trying, Joanne. If you're listening to this, <laughs> go to Annapolis without him. Just let us have him. You know what I mean? Let us have him back. I'm going to try to bring him back. With me. Oh. In August. Are you really? In August? Well, it's been, May. Yeah. <laughs> it's best I can get All right. Well. Yeah. So, where is your family? Like, where is your family right now? Not your wife and kids, but, like, your family. Where do they live? Like my parents? Yeah. They live here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they live here. Uh, the rest of my family, I don't know. Spread out California, Dallas. Well, I knew you grew up in California, so I didn't know your parents were here. Did they bring you here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you moved here after high school or something. No, they came here when uh, I was, I was, I went to ninth grade here. So oh. I went through all my high school year. Yeah. yeah really. How was that? How was Abilene as a freshman? Heck of a culture shock. I bet. Oh, man. It's still a culture shock. You know, I moved here from Houston, yeah. which is in Texas. Yeah. But I was like, oh. Yeah, small school. I mean, my my ninth grade graduating class in California would have been like 700, 800 kids. And my here, sister graduated from Woodson, Texas. Her graduating senior class was nine. <laughs> I dated a girl from Plano, Texas. Yeah. Her graduating class was over 2,600. Yeah, yeah. And when I found that out, I was like, y'all had 2,600 seniors. Yeah. Y'all should win state and football every year. <laughs> With that many people, you can't get enough talent to make a team? Right. I don't, I mean, because, you know, it was sophomore, junior, senior. That's 7,500 kids. Yeah. You can't come up with 12? Yeah. One for the bench? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe they focus on something else. Yeah. Heroin. <laughs> there was a lot of, there was a lot of teenagers dying in Plano from heroin back in the day. You know, that was another culture. That was another shock to me. You know, I went to school and I mean I went to school in LA. Uh it was the school was primarily minorities and I never saw a drug. I come here, there's drugs everywhere in school. It's the first time I saw marijuana. But to be fair, but to be fair, when you were here seeing them, it was still the minorities. <laughs> it was not. I'm just there was with like you. three minorities I, in the whole school. I'm messing with you. It was, uh, it, yeah, that, that was a culture shock. Is you know. Yeah, back in the day, you know, I grew up in Lubbock. 
and I went to Monterey High School, and my best friend Tim went to Coronado. Yeah. And that was predominantly, at the time I didn't know it, but predominantly that was the two white schools. Oh, okay. There's five high schools there. I didn't realize that until way years later. Someone said that was like, ah, oh, you never grew up around black people. And I was like, yeah, I did. I had friends that were black. And they were like, where did you go to school? And I was like, Monterey. And so I went and looked at my yearbook. <laughs> there were six black kids. I was friends with yeah. all six of them, but yeah. I just didn't notice yeah. that it was like, you know, the scales were tipped. Right. And Oh, who's that? Colin. Probably Jay. Oh, hey, there you go. There it is. You're calling the car wash. What can I do for you? Yeah, this is Jay uh, Patterson. Um, returning the call about that box of condoms. Uh, don't throw those away. Uh, some of those are currently incubating, and um, it's a long process. Well, that's why we called. We didn't <laughs> want to mess with what possibly could be the greatest air of all times. And that's why I like bringing my cars to your watch. <laughs> well, I, you know, 1-800-C-A-R-W-A, no, yeah, W-A-S-H, car wash. Call us up. We will take care of your used condoms. Absolutely. So what's up, bro? Oh, not much. Sorry, Mr. Call. No, it was busy no. At the shop. I, we were calling to ask a question, and now I have no idea what it was. Do you? It was about the McAuliffe. Yeah, you were calling about the condom, so what's do with it? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> then we also heard that there was a McAuliffe event on Wednesday. Yes. Tell us so about the, that. <clears throat> so we are um, going to partner with McAuliffe Cigars. We're going to have a special event this Wednesday from 6 to 9. Uh, proceeds are going to be donated to uh, the Red Cross uh, to assist with uh, the eventual fallout from the wildfires around here. Oh, great. Yep. And, and, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's going to be awesome. <laughs> Where are you calling from, Jay? I'm calling from my cigar lounge. I knew it. <laughs> so are you are you closing yeah i'm closing up right now okay well if you get time feel free run by bro i would but i probably ought to head to the house and try to get some good sleep we're driving to fort worth tomorrow ah is Corey going with you no Corey's in austin oh and so now i'm gonna go to fort worth because uh it's Hopefully, my la the last follow up with my son's uh, GI specialist that cooks. Oh, awesome, man! Awesome. And so we'll we'll see what they say. But he's been doing a lot better. And hey, man, that's a great hospital, especially for the kiddos. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, cool. Well, y'all have safe travels, and we will see you on your return. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, man. Take care. Love you, brother. Love you too. Bye, guys. All right, so there you go. Jay's not coming by, so yeah. But that's a uh, yeah. Those wildfires are nuts. Well, yeah. In case you don't know, in Abilene area, just south of town, actually, we've had damn near ten thousand acres burn. Yeah. Did you know we've lost fifty to sixty homes? Yeah. And I was talking to Casey about that earlier today. And she was like, you know, I could give a shit less about my house. And I've got my stuff that I care about ready to go at any time. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, me too. You know, I've got like three big old containers of photos that cannot be replaced. That's getting loaded. And then I have a fire safe that's got a handle on it that you can carry. And it's yeah. got all the documents that we ever need. Right. And really, that's it. And then. Casey was like, eh, eh, yeah, and I also have a dog, and so my first thing is I'm going to take my dog out to the car, drive it down half a block, and then come back and get the rest of the stuff. Uh. And I was like, yeah, we have a similar plan, but what we do is we put the dog in the bathroom, lock the door, grab all our shit, and leave. 
<laughs> That's a Larry type of plan. <laughs> oh, <hey>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oof. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oof. You you saw my dog. Yeah. You know he's 11 years old. <laughs> he's old. I, I thought it was a cat the first time I saw him. It was dark. He just <laughs> ran past me. I was like, "What? Probably has cats." He's a fat cat. If he was, <laughs> I mean. He's a little chunk a cool on little four dog. little legs. When we used to keep the pool going, one day he, my daughter had him on a floaty and he fell off. Oh, dude, just boom, oh. all the way to the bottom. <laughs> like those little legs are like if you were trying to swim with pencils. You know what I mean? You're getting no oh, current dog. behind your motion. <laughs> yeah. So I brought him up. <sighs> One year, I don't know if you were living here then, but like three, no, probably four or five years ago when we were getting like tons of rain. Yeah. Abilene had a rat problem. Were you here for that? Well, yeah, I've been here 17 years now. Oh, well, you were here then. Yeah. We were like, whoa, because, you know, down at the end of the street is Riverside mm. and the river is there. The river was overflowing and rats oh. were just everywhere. Jeez. And so we bought those big old bricks of green something that yeah. they eat. It dehydrates them. Yeah. And it has poison in it. Well, then we also bought like these chicken water feeders and put rat poison in water that dehydr dehydrates them even more. Yeah. And so we bought all that, put it out. Anyway, my dog ate one of those green oh. bricks. And live to tell the tale. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, dude, that dude can eat anything. <laughs> like, he was, like, not feeling good. He was like, oh, I'm sick. And I was like, what'd you eat? We found, like, this much left. Wow. My wife calls the vet, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'll bring him down. We'll do blah, blah, blah. And by the way, it's 850 bucks. Yep. And I was like, yeah, he's not going to the vet. I'll take him for a ride. You know, know. I'm not spending 850 bucks to save a 10 year old or at the time, seven year old dog. Yeah. You know, come on. Are you that close that you would pay 850? I mean, I'd pay, I'd pay what I needed to pay to get him. Are you serious? Yeah. What, if, what if it was $4,000? I mean, then we start figuring out what we need to do right like that's, yeah well, like take him for a ride right 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 because that i mean something that expensive then you got to realize well is he going to be miserable the rest of his you know little dog life so let me ask you this i'm the vet i say give me four thousand dollars and i'll make him brand new he'll be the happiest dog on the planet are you paying four grand then probably are you serious yeah Wow. I like the hell out of my dogs. I I don't. <laughs> I was going to say I do too, but that would be a lie. Yeah, yeah. My dog, I'm waiting for him to die. <laughs> we we have a little dog and we have a husky. The husky protects the house. Yeah. Uh the little my dog My dog doesn't do shit. Yeah, yeah, he the, eats. The That's little dog is an does. emotional thing for my wife, you know, cuz she was in the army and PTSD, so she Okay. That, so I could never My dog was my daughter's dog and then when she was 17 she left home and didn't take the dog yeah well that happens so now the dog is mine that happened to my parents with my sister too mm. yeah not a fan yeah that, that that's like recycling a dog yeah i'm not a recycler do you recycle no we abilene doesn't recycle they used to yeah they used to and then they quit so I mean, it's not like we don't recycle by by choice. We don't have a choice. But if we did, the reason they took it down was because nobody was using it. Yeah, that is expensive. And, right. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, let's jump. Larry's like, all right, it's time to yeah, go. Let's yeah. go. Back to what makes a good cigar. Yeah. We've said it's not price. So what what the and for you. For you, because it, it may be different for everyone. But what makes a good cigar to you? <clears throat> Two things. Well, three. The construction. 
the flavor. I like the threes. I like them to change the profile in the thirds. And uh, the nicotine. Um, not the strength, but the type. And Well, expand on that a little bit because, like, I didn't even know there's different types of you know, nicotine. It's something nobody really talks about, but we've started really diving into it at the leaf yeah i mean have you researched uh, it or are y'all just no, blowing shit no we, out? we just i mean and we talked you know recently we had a chance to talk to nick perdomo because his his cigars tend to be on the strong side nicotine wise but perdomo's cigars for a lot of people not everybody people some people can you know have different tolerances to different nicotine but some nicotine will give you that clean nicotine hit where you're just like in the cloud and you're like oh man I'm going to just sit here and relax. Other type of nicotines, though, make you green, make you want to throw up. And that's the type I want to stay away from. Well, now, let me ask you this, though. Is there different types or is there different amounts? I, I don't know if it's I don't think it's the amount. You don't. And the reason I think that is because I've smoked uh, like the Crux Bull and Bear. OK, the big old the big old boy. I've smoked that. And, you know, I, I can't smoke the the other leaf right it, it it doesn't do well for me but the way that cigar that nicotine hit me i mean i was in the clouds and i didn't feel sick and, and, and a lot of people say well you need to eat first but it really you know i've tried it before eating I've, I've done it without eating that certain stick has a nicotine that what i i call it a clean nicotine hit okay where you get the hit and then it goes away gradually and then you're fine there's other cigars, though, that I don't care if you've eaten a five-course meal before it. You smoke that thing, and you're going to feel a little sick after smoking it or towards the last third. Let me tell you this. <clears throat> I've smoked an array of cigars. No. None of them make me sick. It's person-by-person person based. I mean, I agree. It is. Yeah. And it also has a lot to do with how much nicotine you can handle. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, if you have a brand you new handle. guy and right. I give you the double Lajero, you're going to get sick. Yeah, Well, like my buddy James, he smoked other cigars with me and he hasn't gotten sick, but he smoked that Perdomo Habano and he wasn't prepared for it. It made him throw up. And he identifies as a male. <laughs> is that true? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. I, well, I hope he does. Well, I mean, I, I'm I'm whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying I thought he identified as a male. <laughs> he does. He does. Uh but I've actually met a lot of people that uh and and, and I'm not identify as males. Well <laughs> and I'm I've not met picking a lot on, of guys that do that too. I'm not picking on Perdomo because there's other sticks that have that type of I don't know what it is, if it's in the fermentation now, process. What, what, now I want to ask you this because we are like we are at opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to our experience. Right. It's like our journeys have been completely different. Right. Which I find interesting because you have a completely different way of looking at cigars, smoking cigars. And I appreciate seeing different because mm. I know lots of guys that are on very similar journeys like me. Yep. And it's like, yeah, we agree on most things. Yep. But me and you have differences of opinions on a lot of things, and I appreciate a different view right. instead of hearing what people who are on basically a cookie-cutter experience like I've been on. You right. know what I mean? Because I pretty much followed the way a lot of guys do, where you start out with the bold and get bolder and bolder until, yeah. like – you're the man. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, I'm tired of this. What else can I smoke? And then you go back and find there's a whole cool journey out there oh, of yeah. cigars. You didn't do that. No. You started light yep. and working your way up, yep. which is the way I recommend people to do it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I started very light. The Connecticut's all the way and then started into Habanos. And I'm very much still in my beginnings of Maduro's. Right, right. Um, totally different than what I... I started, the darker the cigar, the bigger the ring gauge, <laughs> that's what I was smoking. Right, right. Yeah, those are the two uh, different journeys that people go on. And did you know now? So this was a long time ago. But now, sales on those 
big ring gauges are going down. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I talked to a insider, gave me that information. Huh. Wonder why. Because I think cigar smokers are getting more educated. Okay. And so instead of going down the road that is cool, yeah, they're actually going on the journey. And I'm not going to say the way it should be because every journey is a journey. Yeah. But to me, it makes more sense to do the way you're doing it versus the way I did it. Well, the big ring, the big ring, the big ring cigars. Sometimes they're just big for the to be big. Oh, a hundred percent. It's, it's kind of like wine. You got the box wine, then you got the regular bottles of wine. Right. Most wine aficionados will stay away from the box wine because that's just to get drunk. R- right. Yeah. It's kind of like Jack Daniels when I was nineteen. Yeah. That's exactly. What or fireball. Oh. <laughs> I'm not a fan of fireball. Oh, well, you know, if you start drinking good bourbons, yeah, that's not even whiskey. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's, yeah. no, that's some good. concoction. No, and the, and and going to the leaf has really got me started on that because I I was really I don't drink much. Uh, I was going through a scotch phase, and then I switched to bourbons when I started hanging out with y'all. But so. How was your scotch journey? My scot Was it short? It, it wasn't short, and I'm still kind of on it, because I like the peatiness. I want all the peatiness in my scotch. Peatiness. Really? Yeah. See, I'm not. Oh, man. Like, in fact, I had drank Springbank, which I always tell everyone that's my favorite scotch. Okay. Very light on the peat, very light on the smokiness, and they still do everything by hand. Mm. The only distillery in Scotland that still does it by hand. Everybody else has moved on the computers and you yeah, know, all that stuff. I'll have to try that. And so Larry picked up a bottle for Ed, and Ed shared it with me, and when I drank it, I hadn't had it probably in over a year, and I was like, wow, that is peaty. Oh. But back when I was drinking it, it was very smooth and sweet. Yeah. But after drinking so much bourbon, yeah, it was like, mm, I'm really not even a fan of that anymore. Oh, interesting. I have really dove into the bourbon adventure, Yeah. and I love trying new bourbons and going back to the ones I love. And what I figured out from Ed was I'm not a scotch guy. Like my only two favorite scotches was the spring branch 10 year. Yeah. And the doers 21. And I haven't tried the doers 21 again, but I would imagine it would not be as good as what I remember it to right. be. And I don't want to taint that memory, right. so I'm just going to let it ride. <laughs> it's going to leave it a memory. Leave it a memory. Yep. Because I was really like, holy cow, I, I don't like this. Yeah. So, and I told you earlier, I had a friend that called me and was like, hey, what, what about the Glenn Levitt? And I was like, I didn't know you drank scotch. And he's like, oh, I don't. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you drinking scotch? Yeah. Well, you always talking about, and I was like, no, I'm talking about bourbon. <laughs> so he ended up going and getting the 17, what is it? 1792. Okay. Yeah. Which is a great is starting a good, point yeah. for any bourbon drinker. And anyway, I was just like, dude, if you've never had scotch, he was, I was like, you know what? I had a friend, Sam. Yeah. And he shared his bottle of 15-year-old Glenn Levitt, and I didn't like it. Yeah. I went right back to my bourbon. A guy brought in a bottle of uh, Johnny Blue, yeah. which is like 200 bucks. Yeah. And I talked to him a few times, and he came over, and he was like, hey, let me pour you a drink. And I was like, nah, I'm good. I was drinking bourbon, and I was like, he was offended. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why waste it on me? Right. You know what I mean? That right. makes sense. Yeah. You yeah, spent yeah. 200 bucks on that? Don't get offended. Be happy that you saved the poor. Yeah. Or two. Absolutely. Yeah, I would never be offended. Like, hey, man, thanks for sending me that. Right. And so, anyway. All right. Well, let's get back on the good cigar. 
So, like, what is it that you look for when you go into the humidor for a good cigar? Uh, <clears throat> Man, that's a tough question because I've never Have thought about it. Have you gone into it. the humidor by yourself yeah. and picked out a cigar you never smoked before? Yeah. And how yeah. was that experience? It's It's been almost... It's almost always been great, um, especially because of the leaf selection. Uh, you can't really go in there. It, it's hard to go in there and get a bad one because um, Jay has it curated so well. But uh, he the, really does. Yeah. The most recent one was the, that 1936 La Galera. That was a good stick. I I'd never that. had that yeah. until you told me about it. Yeah, I just walked in there and I said, well, you know, that one looks like it's something I'm going to try. Now, had but, you smoked the Connecticut already? I hadn't. I haven't oh, tried the La Galera at all. Good line. And if you guys haven't tried them, I mean, they are way underpriced. Oh, way underpriced. Or I mean, you're talking seven. Prices. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's, I like to say it's a value cigar, but it's not a value cigar. No, that it, 1936 box It's a box 10 price. to $12 cigar all day long yeah. for under 8 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, the what, box seven twenty five oh eight. Okay. Yeah, the, the Connecticut I think is seven something. Yeah, but that's that that's something where I just walked in and I'm trying to think what made me choose it and I don't. I just think I just go in there and go, okay, I haven't smoked that. I'm going to try that, and then I'll just give it a shot. Let me tell you something that's fun. I did this probably five or six months ago. Because we get into our routines when we go into the humidor. It's yeah. like. I go across the first aisle, I turn down, and then I start looking. Well, there's a whole world over here that I never look at yep. because you get into that, you know, routine. Yep. So one day I walk in, I decide to go down the first aisle, I close my eyes, take five steps, stick my arm out, and whatever I touch, that's what I'm getting. Yep. And I got a crystal ball revelation. Holy crap, it was good. Never smoked it. Yep. Would never probably pick it, but was completely blown away when I smoked it. Yeah. And I, if you haven't ever tried that, yeah, try give that. It a shot. Go down. Don't even look. Just find something and try it. I was blown away. It's a great stick. And I've smoked several since then. Yeah. No, I, I don't I don't tie myself to a certain cigar. I've never have. I'm always smoking something different. I smoke a lot of different stuff, but I also smoke a lot of the same. Like I smoke a shit ton of McAuliffe. I yeah. smoke a shit ton of Tabanero. Yeah. And then after that, I smoke a lot of the uh Saka stuff yeah. that Jay has. So, yeah. The Aladino yeah. stuff. Uh I mean, it's the my father's. I'm a big My Father yes, fan. Yes. I think they too. make really good cigars. They do. Uh, and now, have you smoked the Lee Bijou 1922? No. That is their powerhouse cigar. But it's also freaking amazing. And I always smoke it in the Petite Robusto. Okay. <clears throat> because if you're going to smoke a really strong cigar like that, yeah. it's the perfect size. Where if you go smoke a six by fifty six, <laughs> you're getting your ass kicked. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. I want to enjoy what it has to offer, but I don't want to get my ass kicked. Right. So that size, in fact, when they don't have one, I'm like, oh, and then I don't get one. But then, have you tried the La Galera? No, excuse me. The uh, oh shit. The blue band, I my brain has forgot. It's not the Opalencia. It is the, damn it, I can't remember. It's like a turquoise color. Mm. No? I don't know. Wow, that's disappointing that neither one of us can remember. <laughs> wow. You know what? I'll remember it when we get done. But anyway, it is like, you know how the medallia is? Yeah. It's like that. With that much flavor profile, yeah, and not the nicotine, oh, like it's a medium, okay. And when I think of that stick, I'm like, I think you would love it. See, that's interesting because the McDolly, I didn't think it had that nicotine punch. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I've never felt no, it. As no, a no, 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 no. It doesn't. Like I think of the medallia as a medium yeah. when it comes to strength. Yeah. 
But this, for my father's, I actually think comes in under that. Interesting. But it still has all that flavor. Yeah. And so you should definitely, La Grande Oferte. Oh, okay. Great stick. Comes in a 6x46, just like the Medallia. Yeah. And it's a really good stick. Yeah, I'll give that a shot. So what else comes into play when you're looking for that good stick? The, the construction, the veins, right? You don't want a veiny cigar. So when you're looking at a new cigar you haven't tried, are you looking at the seams? I, I'm looking at the cap. Um, I love a three cap. That's like we give a shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Not yeah. not very many people do three caps. Most people do one or two. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, Sombra Mesa, La Brulee, I think that has like four or five caps. Actually, what you don't know is the entire cigar is just caps. I think it's like 4,022. <laughs> <laughs> they reamed it one time. <laughs> no. And then they, cover it all. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just one. It's 420 or 4,023 <laughs> caps. No, but I, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I think Sokka does a great job. Oh, man. That brulee for a, for a morning. Oh, Cigar with a coffee. You just starting off the day with that. It's in my top five. It, it's it's one of the few cigars. Well, that's over let me clarify. Minutes. It's in my top five Connecticut. Oh man, that that one's in my top five. All really. I mean that. It's it's one of the few cigars that I go in there and I'm like, yeah, I'll pay thirteen, fourteen bucks for that. And that's how I am yeah. when I find a stick that is like valued for that price point. Mm. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. What I don't do. Is I don't smoke twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollar cigars that I find cigars that are eight to ten that are better. Yeah, no, you know absolutely. What I mean? And there's a lot of those. Yeah, there is. It's like I I'm not going to mention any names, but there's some cigars out there that are in that twelve to fourteen dollar range that I'm like, it's good, but it's not fourteen dollars mm-hmm. good. Not. Yeah, I've run into that a few times. No, I try to stake ten. I try to. For new cigars, I stick to ten dollars or under. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to pay more than ten, eleven dollars for a cigar you never smoked. Yeah. Especially if it's a brand you've never tried. Yes, yes, yes. Once I smoke that, and I think, man, this is great, then I'll try the more expensive line. There was a cigar company that came out like four years ago, and I uh, great packaging. Really great packaging. And so I got some. But these cigars were the $25 to $35 range. Whoa. Out of the gate. Yeah. And I smoked them, and they were good. Yeah. But they were $10 to $12 good, not $30 yeah, good. That's... And the only reason I smoked through the entire line was because they sent them to us. Right. I'm not going to bash them. You know what you got in it. But for me, I was like, I'm not smoking that again. Yeah. I'm not paying 30 bucks for a cigar that I could buy three no. that are just as good as this one. No, and then and that high of a cigar, I mean, that high and of I, a And price. I kind of think that a cigar brand that comes out that's asking that price range, yeah. you better blow me away. Absolutely, yeah. Because I don't smoke $30 cigars very often. And when I do, you know what I 99% of the time reach for? A Padron 1926 Maduro number six. That's, yeah. And you know what's funny is, like, before I had ever smoked a uh, Padron, I seen them. They're fancy. They're expensive. And I bought a 1926 $27 $27 plus tax, damn near 30 bucks. Yeah. And I smoked it and I was like, I am very disappointed. Mm. I'm very, you know why? Because on my cigar journey, I wasn't ready for that. Gotcha. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I was just like, where's the spice? Where's the bomb? Yeah. Yeah. I this does not saying. measure up. Right. But I don't know why. I smoked it again three or four months later and it was like you know what that's better than i remember yeah 
couple of months go by, I smoke another one, and I'm like, you know what? That's actually pretty damn good. And then by the fourth one, I'm like, that's one of the best cigars I've ever smoked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with cigars, with a hobby, if you're a hobbyist of cigar smoking, you really want to start. Because with any hobby, if you start off high, you're you're going to burn out. Yeah, you really And that's are. what you do yeah. on the super powerful cigars. Yeah. You burn yourself out, which forces you to go back. Right. Right. Yeah, no, my, my cheapness has kept me from going that high. But for a special event, oh, Padron is what I reach for almost every single time. Have you had the 50th? I don't think so. No. So the 50th is somewhere in the neighborhood between 50 and 60 bucks. Mm, no, I definitely haven't had that. And I smoked it. The only reason I smoked it was because I was at a cigar lounge and they had invited me to come play poker. And there was like nine guys and me playing poker. And I took every single dime from everybody at the <laughs> table. It kind of felt bad. Yeah. But I thought the proper thing to do is to take all my cigar money and spend it all right there. Right. You know what I mean? You're at someone else's shop. Sure. At least spend the money at the shop you're at. Right. right. And so they had the 50th. And I was able to try it. And I would I would never pay $55 for a cigar if it was coming out of my bank. Right. But it was, you know, poker money. And I right. was like, you know what? I've never had one. Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah. And it was really, really good. But I can't say that it was $25 better than the 1926. Yeah. It was maybe... A quarter, mm. 25 cents. 25 cents. Better okay. than the Padron 1926. And I was like, no, I would rather get two Padrones for 60 bucks than spend 55 on this one. Right. That's just me. Oh, yeah. Even when you're smoking top tier, yeah. I still want it to be a value. Yeah. And the 50 is not a value for me. I get that. 100%. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick little break. Larry is giving us the number one sign, or at least number two, but the number one is laying down. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to continue the conversation about what makes a good cigar. I'm going to give my perspective. And then we're going to talk about what makes a great cigar and throw in a little bit about what makes a bad cigar. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a quick break. When I walked by your car, it flashed mm -hmm. its bright or lights at me. Yeah, it's because it was recording you. I want my personal taken off of your car. <laughs> That's my resemblance. <laughs> it's me. It's, it's, it's nice having a security camera everywhere I go. Because right. I, I can just pull it up. All right. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging through the break. We have been drinking and smoking on the break. And you know what? I got to mention my cigar pack, the monthly cigar subscription. This is not a promo for them. But let me tell you what. I met those guys by accident. And they were like, hey, man, we're going to send you a bunch of cigars that we've either had in our cigar packs or we're putting in our cigar packs. Dude, they sent me a ton of cigars I told Jay about. I was like, what's cool is they sent me a ton of cigars that we don't carry. Right. And I'm like, that's a lot of unique cigars yeah. if Jay doesn't carry. Yeah. And so I knew you were a fan of Room 101. Yep. You know that I think that Matt Booth is a complete dick. And so when I saw his picture on the band, his likeness, yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm not ready for a cigar anally. I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> and so I knew you were a fan. And so you lit it up. How is it? It's good. Creamy, smooth. And, you know, I should have known it was a Caldwell because that is Caldwell's. Oh, pretty that, much that is the thing. that's the design. Yep. I mean, I've got another cigar in there that is like the Middle East or something. Uh -huh. And it's got the like what priest or bishop or right. little John, somebody on there that looks like he's praying. Right. And 
It's just like that, yep. except that one. Yeah, this one has Matt has Booth. Matt Booth's face on it. Yeah, like if he was on, uh, what was that show? The uh, the cartoons, uh, you know, where everybody was like kids, but they were like, oh, the Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, okay. He, yeah, that's what that. he, that's what Booth looks like. If he was on the Cabbage Patch <laughs> Kids, that is how he would look. Well, I'll tell you what, I've had the Eastern Standard before. Now that I think about it. But this is... Is that way better? Yeah. I don't think this is the regular Eastern Standard. Hold your fucking camera. Your phone. Oh, I didn't know it zoomed boom, in. There you know, go. Right there. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah um, this is a little bit different than the normal Eastern Standard I smoked. I would think so. Yeah. It's I good. mean, because this has got a little bit of booth in it. Yeah. They call it the Golden Egg, a collaboration between Room 101 and Caldwell, come to find out. <clears throat> but it is creamy, smooth. It's a... This is a great morning coffee cigar, too. And, you know, I'm a fan of Caldwell cigars. Mm-hmm. It was like to, earlier today, uh, Sam was like, oh, yeah, I smoked some Caldwell, and it was, you know, buck 15 or something, which is the lost and found line. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, you know what? I don't like saying that. I like the Caldwell Lost and Found line because Caldwell's not blending these cigars. Basically, he's on a treasure hunt to find cigars that he really likes. Okay. It's a small quantity of cigars, so it's not like they're putting out 5,000 boxes. Yeah. They're probably putting out like 2,000 cigars. Right. But he packages them, and all the money goes to a charity foundation to help, like, kids be in music classes and computer classes, just all kinds of cool stuff for like cool. the inner city right? and homeless people. And so I like some of the cigars. I don't know if you ever heard me talk about, or if you had the opportunity to smoke the swollen cock, <laughs> great cigar, like really good, but it's really not, you can't say it's a call wheel. Mm. You know what I mean? Because call wheel has a very distinct blending tradition it's very medium, a little sweetness, a little bit of leather, a little bit of soil comes back to the sweetness. Yeah. Maybe a Eastern Asian honeysuckle. I made that part up. Yeah. I, yeah. I was trying to go, you know, like cat man. No, I, I caught it right. As yeah. You, you're yeah. like, that, Eastern that's Asian not how you talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. But anyway, no. I, I, I am a fan of what Caldwell does. I love the uh, Long Live the King yep. uh, Mofo, which is also in collaboration with AJ Fernandez. Oh, That's that. probably my favorite. And then the regular standard Long Live the King. I love those two. It's probably my favorite Caldwell's. But I also like the Blind Man's Bluff. Have you had those? No. I think I got one I'll give you. Anyway. Uh, I think Caldwell does a bang up job, but I also think it's like not accurate to say, oh, I love Caldwell and then talk about the lost and found line because Caldwell's not blending those. It's a lot of work on his part, yeah. but he has nothing to do with the blending, but he's doing it for a great cause. He's yeah. raising money for a charity. Right. So I'm down with it, but don't miss classification eyes. You know, I made that word up, by the way. Misclassification yeah. eyes. Yeah, because Sam was talking about that cigar this morning. I just which one? That what you were saying? The blind man's bl- no, no, no. Oh, the, the one he smoked. The one he was talking. The to Mad about. Mofo. No, I don't think it was that. It was a lost and found or whatever. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, the Buck Fifteen. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I love the marketing that Caldwell's done on the Lost and Found. He's came up with a lot of clever names. Really cool, like vintage style graphics, yeah. and they work great. Yeah, it's kind of the hipster of cigars. Yeah, it really. He, and to be fair, Robert Caldwell is probably a hipster. I had him on the show, and I told him, "Dude, that was my favorite interview, one really? of my favorite of all times, because he was just so like, I'm not gonna hide shit. I'm just gonna whatever you ask. I'm gonna answer completely, one hundred percent honestly. Nice. And if you don't like it, then don't buy my fucking product. Oh, nice. I mean, he didn't say that, right? But but that's the core that I get from that dude. Is like, 
if you like what I do, buy it. And if you don't, go smoke something else. Yeah. I'm down, but you know, I'm and he was he was sitting in the warehouse office on a stack of something wearing iPhone earbuds uh, on yeah. an interview. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And hustle and bustle of the factory. Yeah. And he's just hanging out. Cool dude. Yeah. Sounds like it. Good cigars. Because this one's good. So what are you, are you guessing that that's a Connecticut? Or are you thinking that's something else? I mean, I looked it up. They call it a Robusto. 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 Well, that's the size. Oh, sorry. Uh, Habano. Oh, okay. But, it's uh, a very light Habano. That is a very light Habano. I mean, that's at least three shades lighter yeah. than a, yeah. a, a that, regular Habano. Just looking at it. But then you I see that goofy-ass portrait of Booth <laughs> on the front, and you're like, where's the Cabbage Patch Kids? It's also smoking really quick. Yeah, it is. But the burn line's been nice. Yeah. And the ash has been pretty good. You just thumped it. Yeah. I did. I got to quit doing that. You know what? That used to be a really bad habit of mine. Mm. Like, I was always ashing, like, yeah. immediately. And it's like, it took me a while to get out of that habit. Oh, I don't, I don't, I, I let the ash grow because that, okay. you know, that keeps it insulated. Right. But, you know, I know the proper etiquette is to roll it. To but... roll it so you don't spread them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not a whore. Yeah. You're not being, you know, searched by the police. You can't be a little rough with your cigar. You don't have to spread them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'd rather it in the ashtray than on me. Tell you what, you ever been cavity searched? Yo, huh? I have not. Okay, no, me neither. Larry, you have. Oh. Well, but not by a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> that was different. <laughs> Larry's like, you have been cavity searched. I it. Yeah, but you're not a cop. <laughs> oh, I got a badge. Oh. It's plastic. Yes. So, anyway. No. So, let's jump into back to what makes a good cigar. Okay, I'm going to break it down for me. Sure. Like, not that the price point makes a good cigar, but the price point is what allows me to sample the cigar. I'm not, if, if it's a $80 cigar, I'm not buying it. Yeah. As far as I know, that's a bunch of hype. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of like, I would say, the Pappy Van Winkle cigar in the leaf. When I saw that cigar, I was like, the Robusto's 14, the Toro's like 17. And I was like, that is a bunch of marketing bullshit. I'm not paying that. And then, in my curiosity, Won me over mm -hmm. and was like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'll try it. Who doesn't want to? The Pappy, you know, yeah. it's the Pappy. Yep. And so I smoked it and I was like, holy shit, this is really, I enjoyed it. Really good. Yeah. And so on occasion, I pay the 17 bucks yep. because I want to enjoy that level of a cigar. It's a value at 17. It was good. I really enjoyed that cigar. Some people didn't. Have you smoked it more than once? Yeah, smoked it twice. Okay, so you went back. Yes. At that price point, that tells me that you thought it was a value. Well, I smoked it the first time, and I was like, man, this is really good. But a lot of people around me were like, yeah, I don't like it. Or they only liked the first. But then when it got to the infused part, they didn't like it. You know, it's not really infused as it is much exponentially withered. That's a technical term. It's in the industry, okay. exponentially withered. What does that mean? <laughs> Larry's like, he's so full of shit. <laughs> he is so... F okay, I made it up. But it's not like they're taking a, like a turkey baster and injecting flavor. Well, no, I don't think any infused cigars are made that way. <laughs> That's how Drew Estate does it. I don't oh. think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Jonathan. <laughs> Did you did you see his interview? I did not. No. Did you know he was on the stream of thought? I yes. I'm gonna say this. I never met the guy. I've read a ton about him. Yeah. And everything that I read was not anywhere near close to preparing me to talk with the guy. Mm. The dude is something. 
Like, have you ever heard the name of Howard Hughes? Mm -hmm. Eccentric. Boom. Like, Jonathan Drew, I'm surprised he has not built a wooden spacecraft. (laughs) You know what I mean? Step it up a notch. Let's go with the spacecraft. I'm surprised. In fact, he probably has, like, some underground testing of, like, spacecrafts. Dude's something. He's and I say this, he's an intelligent genius. For what he started, think about this. When he started, and I believe the year was ninety six to ninety seven, somewhere in there. He was in a New York, like skyscraper business building, trade center, I think, and thought. I should bring in a kiosk of cigars. And he did that. And he was banking. But that wasn't where he was going to be done. He decided to do a line of Drew Estate cigars. And when the industry was anything but a sweet tip or infused cigar, he killed it. Yeah. Like, killed it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe that he is one of the reasons, one of the few reasons that we are in the biggest cigar boom that we've ever seen. I strongly agree to that. Yeah. Are you aware that acids are the number one selling cigar in the entire United States? <clears throat> well, that's why when they started talking about getting rid of infused cigars, I was like, man, that's a that's a blow to the industry. It is because so many people get started in the hobby with those. Absolutely. I did. I got started in the hobby with the blondie with the acid blondie. That's where you started? Yep. See, I'd already got on to the big spice pepper bomb when I tried a blondie. Yep. And I was like, oh, my God, somebody slit my throat. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was already be way beyond that. Yeah. So I didn't understand that. Yeah. And I was the guy that was like, oh, if you're smoking Drew Estate, you're a big pussy. Well, and so many people bash on those infused cigars, but they really are. Well, I don't bash on them anymore. Like, yep. they're not for me. Yeah. But well, yeah, there yeah. is a huge market that introduces people to quality tobacco. Mm-hmm. They're not smoking a Swisher Sweet. Right. You know what I mean? They're right. not smoking a cheap Backwoods. Right. They're smoking quality tobacco. And if that's your step to get in, more power to you. Yeah. Now, if you start smoking those and 10 years later you're still smoking that, I'm going to slap the shit out of you. That's fair. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. dude, you haven't evolved at all? Right. Right. Yeah, but since they're available at cigar shops, people usually go, well, you know what? I'll try something different today. And, and, there and, you and I've had a lot of people that come in back even when I was working at the Leaf yeah. that I took them straight to the acid line. Oh, yeah. you're new. Yep. All right. Well, let me tell you about these. Yep. And then if you're not wanting something that's sweet or infused, we can go over here to the Connecticut's that's really like, and that's what we did. And that was a better journey than I got because nobody told me how to go about my journey. Right Now I'm not blaming anyone because that was mainly my fault. Yeah. I mean, back when I first started, I would go into a a cigar shop, buy a $20 cigar. And it was like maybe once every three or four months. Yeah. But I figured I'm buying $20 cigars. They got to be fucking good, right? I don't know shit. And I didn't know if they were good or not. I smoked them. I don't remember what they are. And then one day a cigar tobacconist was like, hey, man, have you tried this? And turned me on to a Kristoff, the Mm -hmm. Maduro. I smoked that and was like, holy shit, that's good. I got some flavors out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for a new guy that hadn't made the journey from like the sweet to the Connecticut to the sun grown to the Habano, I didn't have the experience. So when I got that pepper, I was like, this is what a cigar should taste like. I didn't know. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. If that's where you are in your journey, dude, Yeah. that was a great experience. Those pepper bomb cigars that had the good quality tobacco, the good quality construction, 
It was a great freaking cigar for 10 bucks. It's funny because I'm just now getting into pepper bombs. Yeah. And it's a great experience. Oh, yeah. Love it. And like now, I hardly ever smoke a pepper bomb. Oh, like it's just not in my, I mean, every now and then I'll smoke one. Yeah. And about halfway through, I'm like, you know what? That was really good. And I'm done with it. <clears throat> yeah. You started me off with that jalapeno popper you gave me. And then I found that little uh, McAuliffe Magdalia. No, you didn't find that. I gave you one. No, no, not that one. Oh, the, oh, the, the, the petite. Uh, yeah. yeah, the regular. Corona. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That. that well, I remember one. the night we gave you the extended oh, yeah. Corona, the Corona Extra. The special edition. And you, like. Loved it. I thought you were going to undress. You were enjoying it so much. I and did it in the car. Okay, yeah. good. That's a good place to do that. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, dude. I The Medallia is probably the cigar I've smoked by far mm -hmm. of any other cigar. Yep. And you know the first time I had one? So I had a meeting in downtown Fort Worth at the Riata restaurant with Al McAuliffe. I met him. We walked like a couple of blocks to the restaurant together. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little nervous because Al McAuliffe is a very successful guy. Mm -hmm. Like, if you were to Google, like, who is successful, he should be in the top 50. Right. And, dude, he was just so laid back. You know, talking about the weather and the cars going by and okay, cool. But then we went and ate lunch, which was amazing at the Riata. And then we went over to the Silver Leaf and he reaches in his suit inner pocket, pulls out a medallion and says, Hey, we haven't released these yet. These are gonna be out soon. Try one. Yeah. From that day forward, <laughs> I've smoked as many medallions as I can get my hands on. Yeah. I don't blame you. It was like, wow, amazing. Have you ever heard about my lunch and cigar smoking with Al? Mm -mm. Nope. So we're sitting at the Silver Leaf. Yeah. I don't know if you know, but Al doesn't drink. Okay. He's drinking Diet Cokes. Yeah. I'm drinking Jameson's at the time. And I don't know, three, four Jameson's in. I was like, shit, I got to go. Yeah. I, in, in fact, I'm parked on a meter that I know uh, is already expired. Yeah. So I was like, hey, Al, uh, I got to go, but you mind uh, taking a picture before we go? And he's like, no. Stands up. We take a picture together. And then I leave. And I head home. Now, realize... I had been smoking Macau cigars for probably about three months, and yeah. I was like, I was a fan. Yeah. Price point's good. Cigars are good. And so I decided, you know what? I find somebody that I think is this good. I'm going to ask them to be a sponsor. So that's why I'm going to meet with Al. I want to say what Cigar Talk can do for you. Right. And... Anyway, I take off, and when I get back to my car, of course, I've got a ticket. It's 45 bucks. Yeah. I'm driving home. I'm <clears throat> pissed. And then it dawns on me. I forgot to pay my tab. <laughs> First time I ever meet Al McAuliffe, yeah. and I got to email him on my phone, Hey, Al, I am so sorry. I forgot to pay my tab. He sends me back a message. Don't worry about it. I already got it. But, dude, do you know when you're trying to make a good impression? Yes. That is not what you want to do. And you make the do. guy pay for your drinks? <laughs> yeah. The guy who doesn't drink? And, right. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. Yeah. And so what I've heard is <clears throat> everywhere Al goes, he tells that story. <laughs> It's a good story. <laughs> it's like, 
It's embarrassing, but you know what? It is what it is. It happened. <laughs> I was so enamored with taking a picture with Al McAuliffe that, pff, yeah, it was cool. <coughs> so back to what makes a good cigar. We're we're talking about price. For me, you know, it really depends on where I'm at on my cigar journey. If a cigar is going to be good, yeah. Because I mean, you could give me a really nice light light connecticut and i'd be like eh that's not good to me you know what i mean yeah. when it's just like i smoked a monte cristo classic connecticut once and it was like literally puffing air like if you were doing a cold draw yeah and i was like nope not for me so i think a lot of it has to do with where you are right now if it's yeah. good yeah but at the same time, then, even if I enjoy the blend, a Habano, a Sun Grown, a Maduro, even a Connecticut, a Mexican San Andreas, mm -hmm. you know, all those different blends are out there. But how is the construction? Yep. Because if, this, this, if it's just like burning uneven or it explodes, you've had one that split. Mm-hmm. Or if, if the draw's too tight, yep. it's like, well, that's not a good cigar. Right. Now, will I smoke it again? Absolutely. Yeah. Usually, I'll give them at least a second or third chance if I'm not enjoying it because of the construction. Right. Escobar could be hungover, and he didn't do what he was supposed to do. I'm going to give him a pass. Right. I remember when I was 19, I showed up to the tire store. You bought new tires. I put three lug nuts on. Yep. You know what I mean? It was a wrong. It was a bad day. Yeah. But if I'd like the blend, I'm definitely going to give you another shot. Mm -hmm. And if the second cigar is a bad construction, we're probably done. Yeah. Two for two is not good for the home team. No. And so, but if your construction's good... I'm going to smoke it. I enjoy it. I'm going to come back to it again yep. and again. Yep. I and, and that's a big part of finding the really good cigars. There's a lot of cigars out there that you consider to be good cigars that the very first time you smoked it, it would not fall into the category of your good cigar. Right. Don't give up on yep. a cigar the first time. Right. Now, there are instances when it just completely sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going back. No, yeah, yeah. But if it's on the border, I'm definitely going back. And sometimes I don't go back for like three months. And then when I come back, it's a completely pleasant experience. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm digging this. Yeah. So now about a great cigar. What makes a great cigar? Like what separates... A cigar from being good to the great. <clears throat> For me, it's trust that I can go up there and grab a cigar and, and know, you know that it's going to be one so good. For one me, that would be the medallia yeah. and the Tabanero Sun Grown. Mm. Those two cigars are. And now I'll even add the Riata six by forty six to those three. Those three cigars I know are going to be spot on exactly what I need every time I light one up. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. The Tabanero Sun Growns, those I smoked six boxes <laughs> of those. <laughs> I had one that the draw, it wasn't like so tight you couldn't smoke it, but because they had trained me over that long period of time of me smoking so many of those that these are perfect every time that it was like, Oh, that one's a little tight. Right. Like it's not in the realm of being too tight, right? but they have trained me on what a great draw they do that I, I noticed. And that's 20 per box. You're right. Dang. Yeah. That's 240 cigars. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I gave away to people who come over to the show sure, sure. probably two boxes. 
So let's just say four boxes, which is still 80 of them. Mm-hmm. So still a lot of cigars to go. That's to get a one to very a good percentage. Slightly try, tight draw. Right. And I, I mean, I smoked it, no problem. <clears throat> but the whole time I was like, this is not what they normally do. Mm-hmm. And so when you have that good of consistency, you're going to make it to my great cigar list. Mm-hmm. Padron, Padron, 1964, that's... 1926, always on my great cigar yep, list. Yep, same with me. And how about that I am putting cigars that are in the 10 to $12 range with a cigar that's 20 to $30 range. That's a lot. It says a lot. A whole lot, yeah. And there's not a lot of cigars that I put in that group. Not to be consistent every time. Yeah. I mean, that's such an important thing because nothing ruins your day like a plugged or tight draw cigar. It's just annoying. Well, and then you think about, I mean, think about how hard it is to maintain the Medallia flavor profile year after year. Yeah. Different weather every year, different amounts of rain. Right. <clears throat> but you're still maintaining that flavor profile every year. Yeah. Those blenders are That's working impressive. hard to match what they did last year. Right. Yeah, that is impressive. I didn't thought I've never thought of it like that. Yeah, that's yeah, and Padron somehow does it as well. I don't, I don't, but that's why they're priced that way, right? And that's why I'm okay. Paying but those then you also that. have what I consider the blue collar worker Padrones, the two thousand through the nine thousand. Those are good cigars. Never had any of those? Are you serious? No. Wow, even yeah. Larry like looks at you. I know. Evil. I need to try those. I haven't gotten to that part of the humidor yet. Larry just gave me the international sign to let's tie his balls up with <laughs> rope <laughs> and then tie it to the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to get he to He kept the... up with us for a good quarter of a block. <laughs> yeah, that's a wall I haven't gotten to yet. I will. I'll get there. But You know, Ed smokes a lot of those. Does he? Yeah. He would. He would. I would say that I think somewhere in the neighborhood of the 7,000 to the 9,000 is what he really likes if he's not smoking a 26 or a 64. What's the price point on those? The thousands. They're about 10 bucks. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when wow. you get it, when when you start out with the two thousand, that's the lowest end, mm-hmm. and when you get up to the nine thousand, that's the upper echelon. Gotcha. And those are like ten, eleven, twelve bucks. Okay. Depending on what Vitola you get. Yeah. And but I don't smoke those as much as I should yeah. because they are really good. I just don't think about them, and I think maybe it's because when you name a cigar. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. Nothing stands out. I'm like, yeah. it, this is not Tron. <laughs> it's in the it's, thousands. I don't know. What right. Is. Yeah. And then they also have one that's just a Perdomo, which is below the two. But I'm Perdomo. like, you know what? Why? I, I'm, I'm not down with the simplicity of that. I want to be wowed a little bit by the marketing group. I think the 2,000 to 9,000 people were a little lazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there has to be some story behind that. That's I a good question. Why, now, I, we're not going to dive into this tonight. Yeah. Now, before we get into what I'm about to tell you, for me, what makes a great cigar has nothing to do with how strong it is has nothing to do with the flavor profile. It does have a lot to do with the construction okay. and smokability. Yeah. And that even though I say it's not the flavor profile, I still demand, like it's a requirement, that when I smoke your cigar, I have to know that it's quality tobacco. And there's a big difference between tier two, tier three, tier four tobacco mm-hmm. versus 
prime rib, right. grade A right. Texas beef. Right. And so as long as you're in the like really good tobacco, if you have good construction to be the great cigar, I don't care who who makes you. I don't care what the flavor profile is. As long as it's good construction, it's all based on my experience of who I'm smoking with. Yeah. The best cigar that I've ever smoked in my entire life was with my dad eight days before he passed away on the front porch at his house. I have no idea what a cigar it was. He didn't smoke cigars. He dipped snuff, but he came out and smoked cigars with me and Tim. That was the greatest cigar smoking experience I've ever had. That's a but yeah. the cigar was very smokable. It was quality tobacco, and the construction was good. I don't know what it was, but just that whole experience took it to a level that was like my mom died. 30 days ago, and me and dad and Tim and my brother Russell are sitting out here smoking cigars together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the fact that that cigar didn't let you down. Everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. It wasn't probably the best cigar you've ever smoked. No. Right. But it didn't let you down. Good construction, quality tobacco. Everybody enjoyed it. Boom. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I have to agree with that. That's something I never thought about. The company can make or break a cigar. Yeah, and so let's dive into what makes a bad cigar. Hmm. At the top of my list is construction. 100%. Because if you get a cigar that has no draw, game's over. I don't want to reap a cigar. No. It's kind of like, I don't like putting water in my bourbon. I bought some, like, Booker's yeah. that was 127-something proof. And I poured a glass. It was $93, which is a lot yeah. for me. It's a lot. I took a drink, and I was like, nope, that's not for me. And then I let everybody else have it because, and then someone was like, oh, well, you should add water to it. And I'm like... I'm not a distiller guy. I'm not a recipe guy. Right. How much water should you put in there? Do right. you know no. the exact amount? Right. No, because you shouldn't have to put water in there. I want to drink his interpretation as is every time. Sometimes I love it and sometimes I don't like it. Yeah. I don't want to add water right. because now you're turning me into the alchemist that I'm not. Right. Sprinkle a little piss in there after I drink <laughs> lemonade and tea, you know, a little caffeine, a little sweetness. I'm not that guy. Yeah. I don't want to doctor up my drink. I also don't like, I like my alcohol room temperature. Yep. I don't want ice. Yeah. I don't want to water it down and I don't want it to chill. When you chill, you lose the flavor. Right. Because when it's colder, you don't get those expressions. And so I want it just as you created it. You know, if I was married to Angelina Jolie, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've, I've stopped smoking cigars, and I have never gone back to them because I love the flavor. But the construction, I mean, I just... Especially when you're paying 10, 12 bucks for a cigar and just. And, and you can't even smoke half of it. Right, right. Or cut it in the half. I mean, have you ever smoked? Have you tried to power through a really tight draw? I have. It sucks. I get more and more annoyed the more I go through it. And, I, and finally, I just put it down. Yeah. And <clears throat> ah, man, it makes me so upset. Have you ever tried to ream them out? I have. And I have. That, that does not fix the issue oh. it it makes it smokable but it does not fix the issue in turn 
does not create a cigar that you should be able to relax and enjoy. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I just ran a hole through the middle. Now, yeah, there's an airflow channel. It's going to burn, but it's still tight. Yeah. I can smoke it now, but, you know, I'm not getting what I should. No, and you're already annoyed by that point. Yeah. I, I mean, if I know. bought I if I bought this bottle at a liquor store, and on my way out, I dropped it, and it broke off the top, I'm not still going to drink it. Larry would. But, yeah, I'm <laughs> not. You know what I mean? There's, like, broken glass in there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, it'll be fine. No. No. I no. want it the way it was intended. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there, uh, there's some cigars out there that I... God, I wish I could smoke all the time, but I can't. Sure. Well, it's like what? Uh, my favorite Lancero was the walking stick. Oh, yeah. Definition. But it got to the point where I would just, every other one was had, just had terrible construction, and I had to. Had you stop. know, I, I love the guys behind the brand at Definition Cigars. But I had some issues myself, and that's when I quit smoking them. Yeah. Because... If you're batting 500 as a cigar maker, not good enough for me. Mm -hmm. I need you batting 900. I really do. Yep. And if I was on a major league baseball team, it would only be because I was the water boy. Yeah. Because I'm not batting 500 (laughs) in the batter's box. (laughs) So, you know, if you're not batting 900 as a cigar manufacturer... Yeah, there's a good chance I'm not smoking your product on a regular basis. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, and I don't care what you are. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I haven't gone back to them at all. And and I love those guys, and I think some of their blends, oh, their blends. are great. Yes. But don't tease me with a blend on a cigar I can't smoke. Right. Like right. the Cameroon they have. Yeah. I was. Dude. Yeah, one heck of a cigar. I was a fan. Yes. But, you know, three or four cigars that were so tight I couldn't smoke them, I was like, all right, I spent 40 bucks and I wasn't able to smoke one. Yeah, and, and you always hope that they'll get back to it. Right. But then, And I've heard that they have, but then I've heard they haven't. Well, Larry recently smoked one, and they had a pretty tight draw. Oh, that was you? Yes. Okay, so Larry. Yeah, and I was i had high hopes because i love the guys behind the brand so much that i want them to be successful i want to smoke their cigars but you can't treat me that way Mm -hmm. i deserve someone who loves me (laughs) tabanero loves me me. let's talk about about tabanero yeah you know the thing about it is I don't know if you were there. Were you there when Bill got there? You were, weren't you? When yeah, Bill, when today, Bill yeah, showed yeah. up. Oh, yeah, he smoked up. And I got up out of Bill's chair and sat over there yeah. in between you and Casey. Yeah. And Bill was like, what would you recommend, Rob? And I was like, Tabanero Sun Grown Toro. Yeah. Told him where it was in the humidor. And he was like, well, are they any good? And I said, well... It was my cigar of the year last year, so, you know, I think they are pretty damn good. But with Bill, you never know when you recommend a cigar to him if he's going to like it or hate it. So he comes back. He bought exactly what I recommended. I watched him light it up. He didn't say a word. And he took two or three puffs, and I waited he didn't say a word. And I was like, he's going to tell me he hates this. And about four more puffs in, he was like, hey, man, this is a really good cigar. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, when you get Bill Kalame to give you the stamp of approval on a cigar you recommended, you were you were you hit the game winning run. Right, right. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. when Bill tips his hat it's something because bill does not go outside of what he considers to be really good right 90 percent of the time he's smoking the padron 1964 anniversary yeah 
or the 26. Yeah. And so when he <coughs> gives you that on a cigar you recommend that's not in that echelon, it's like, ah, nice. Yeah, yeah, that reaffirms what you were thinking. So that was cool. And if you guys are interested in trying Tabanero, the Sun Grown was my cigar of the year last year. And right now, halfway through the year, with all the cigars I've tried this year, it's still wow. top three. It's impressive. Absolutely. <clears throat> and the only reason I don't say number one is because there's a lot of cigars that I've smoked that I'm like, that was really good. I got to smoke it again. Yeah. Do you do that? Yeah. Like when you find a cigar you think is really good, you got to smoke it again. 100%. To verify that it's as good as you thought it was. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times where it was like, second go around wasn't quite as good. And then I'll smoke it again and be like, okay, yeah. okay, we're back where I thought we should be. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. with Tabanero, it's just, dude, every freaking time. Yeah. I right also, on. I also go back to test consistency and construction. And, you know, I asked Yonko, I was like, dude, I've smoked, at that time, I'd smoked two boxes. I was like, the draw is perfect every time. And he was like, yeah, every cigar we put on a test draw machine. Yeah. And I was like, I don't understand why everyone doesn't do That's that. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, they have the manpower to do it. And the machine and the machines, is yeah. like, I want to say the machine's like $6,000. Yeah. If you're selling thousands of cigars you should be test drawing your cigars yeah yeah uh it's just that added little security yep yep uh perdomo does that oh yeah 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 Yeah, we were talking and uh he actually pat actually took the wrapper off the the back and there was a colored mark because each one of their uh rollers has their own colored mark oh really different color and then that's is now is the roller the same person that tests it? No, no, oh. it's a different tester. Wow. And then uh, if, if so, if you are like churning out cigars that don't pass the test, yeah, so they behead you. <laughs> so they, they got a they got what they call a timeout room, where they go and then they make them roll, you know, a few cigars and then test those, just to make sure. So if you get on a roll where you're off. Yeah. We're going to put you back on a roll where you're on. Yeah. And if not. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool seeing the mark on there. I mean, you know, they go in and mark all of them. and That's cool. Whoever's got the bad mark gets. Now, is that on, mark. like, if you go buy a uh, Perdomo right now at the Leaf, it'll have that. It'll on have the... that. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I was on a Perdomo kick. I think they make good cigars. Mm-hmm. But what turned me off long term was that 90% of what they make is a 56 and up ring gauge. Yeah. Like my go-to, if I'm going to smoke a Perdomo, is the box press uh, torpedo 20-year anniversary Maduro. Yeah. Great stick. Yeah. It's not your mild. It's not your medium. It's full-bodied. But the construction is fantastic. The tobacco is top quality. That's yeah. my Perdomo go-to. It is. I mean, they have a long history, and they take their stuff seriously. You can go on their YouTube page and see how they do everything in the factory. I mean, he whipped out his phone, and he could see all the temperatures and humidity from the At factory. At the factory? Yep. Wow. From his phone. Is, uh, now, you went and saw him in Dallas last yes. two weeks ago? Yep. While we were doing a stream No. We were here for the stream Oh. No, that was... Uh, we were there Monday, Tuesday. And then y'all did the oh y'all went there in the week. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then y'all did that on Wednesday. No, we did it on Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Sorry. Yeah, I mean Wednesday is not oh, even geez. close to Saturday. I don't know what was Wednesday? Did you? And I want to tell everybody. I don't know if you know, but we ended up grand total after all the shipping expenses. Yeah. And some other expenses that to put on the show. Yeah. We raised thirty eight hundred dollars and. 36 no 38 and 30 well, 3836 dollars that's awesome you know what that's a lot of care package that is a lot of care package and let me tell you after really working closely with cigars for warriors and i went and shipped a lot of stuff myself because mm-hmm. we had an auction 
Dude, when did shipping go up? <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. Like boxes that I normally used to pay six bucks for were 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Boxes that I used to pay 20 bucks for were 40 bucks. Yeah. I was like, Holy crap. Yeah, it's expensive. I don't man. ship stuff very much. Uh, like when we do stuff for our guys, it's usually drop ship. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, uh, no. My wife, here, my wife, because she has her, her nail business and she, man, those prices going up have really kicked her butt. Yeah, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. And so after talking with Cigars for Warriors, they were like, you know what we really need is not cigars. We have cigars. Yeah. We need money to ship the cigars because mm. they are getting screwed on shipping overseas. Yeah, I can imagine. So at $3,836, we're able to ship a shit ton of care packages. See, I was thinking they had some kind of deal with the. Uh... No. No, armed forces. no, they've tried to do that, and so far they have not been successful. Saying, hey, you're going there anyway, take our shit with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I think. It's for your guys. Yeah, absolutely. And so, but no, they don't do that. Oh, man. International shipping. Jeez. Right. <sighs> it is not cheap to ship a package to Afghanistan. No. Not cheap at all. Yeah, I never thought. I always thought they just sent it with the with the guys. Yeah, and I mean that's so we are dedicated, however long cigar talk lasts, yeah. to doing a streamathon once a year for our favorite charity event, which currently is Cigars for Warriors. Yeah, and you know, I don't I don't ever commit like from now on. Mm -hmm. Because, like, Storm, he's the head dick in charge. He leaves, and some douchebag takes over. Might not be my cigar charity right. event. Right. But the experience of giving back was so amazing that we're going to do a streamathon every year. Yeah. And hopefully, it'll be Cigars for Warriors because, dude, supporting our armed forces, men and women all over the world, I'm digging that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and I've talked to a lot of the guys who come through the leaf, and they've gotten those care packages. They've all enjoyed them. <clears throat> yeah, and I don't know if you know, but the streamathon was eight hours. Mm. Well, actually, like eight and a half. And so, I downloaded all the video afterwards, and I'm going to condense, hopefully, like a two-hour episode to get all the best of the best. Oh, nice. And put that on YouTube. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube and you've made it this far in, which statistically nobody's watching at this point, <laughs> like and subscribe to the fucking page. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what? Your numbers help support us financially, believe it or not. The more we can show our numbers the more legitified we are yeah. is that a word legitified yeah. yeah i mean i mean you can have it in the background playing absolutely like podcast, you know? absolutely and what i would love if you are at a cigar shop that has big screen tvs and there's not a game on freaking like ask them to youtube uh, cast us yeah. on the actual tv in the lounge That's because you know what? We support brick and mortars 100%. Yeah. We support the lounge experience because to me, the lounge experience is the core of the community. It is. You can go in a cigar lounge, buy a cigar, and leave and go smoke it and really, really enjoy it. But you're not getting the community aspect. Right. Now, You've been in the cigar community for how long? At the Leaf? I don't know. I mean, just in general. <sighs> Three years? Probably less than that. I, I usually kept to myself even going to the Leaf um, until, you know, I ran into until me and Larry started talking. Then And I didn't smoke that much. Yeah, then. very you know, rare. I would come in, I'd have my earphones <laughs> on, and I'd smoke a cigar and then go home. 
Uh, but yeah, no, I've started smoking a whole lot more since then. And it's nice because I didn't smoke that much before because I would get a, small, a good cigar, but I didn't really, my wife didn't smoke. I don't have anyone else to talk to. My about wife doesn't smoke. Yeah, so it's nice to have people to talk about. Yeah, the, the experience. With. Yeah, it turned into a hobby, really. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how it started for me. Mm-hmm. And then after a seems like a really long journey, it turned into a community for yeah. me. And then when you get into the community aspect, that's when it's like, yeah, I'm 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 not leaving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? It's like Brett Favre with Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, that community is, and, and you know, going to different lounges around DFW, we saw that community in certain lounges, and yeah, it's, it's so nice. And you're always accepted as a cigar smoker. Yeah, I mean, like I know there's other clubs type things that people join. Yeah, but for me, the cigar community is the is the community that's like non-judgmental yep i mean you know me decently well mm-hmm. there's a lot of communities to be like don't let that dude back in yeah <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> rob just pulled up locked the doors yeah and so the cigar community is not like that no it's like they embrace you and let you be you yeah and that's a big thing for brick and mortars i mean you got some brick and mortars that don't make it because they didn't build a community Building a community, to me, is the most important part. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not supporting the community, you're not in it for the right reason. Right. Like, I don't smoke cigars because I have to smoke cigars. Yeah. I do a, with my regular job, career, we do training series every year. And those training series last for four days and so you're in classes yeah from eight until five well you know from eight to five i normally smoke like four cigars yeah i didn't smoke any and it wasn't because i didn't want to right it's because there was nowhere to smoke right not allowed to and but you know what it didn't bother me at all yeah because one I wasn't hanging out with dudes that are part of the cigar community. Right. I was hanging out with peers right. from work, and it was all about work. So I wasn't even thinking about I should be smoking a cigar. Yeah. Now, you flip that around, if I have the opportunity to smoke a cigar, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I, when I go to those classes, I usually only smoke maybe two or three cigars a day. Yeah. And so it's not like it's a habit that that you have to. Right. It's a journey that you want to. Mm-hmm. So anyway, guys, uh, you know what? I don't want to lose sight of Tabanero. Look down the show notes. You can go straight to their website. Order up the Sun Grown. Yeah. You know what? And then in the show notes or whatever they give you, put in there that you heard from Cigar Talk that you want to try the Sun Grown's. My cigar of the year for 2021, and it's holding its head high in 2022. Also, Macau cigars, you've heard me talk numerous times about the Riata, the Medallia, the Connecticut. Those are my three go to's from the Macau line. They have a huge line that has, I mean, Sumatra, yep. the Matafina, the uh, Nicaraguan, the Lajero, mm-hmm. the Connecticut. The Experiencia, the Reserva, they make a cigar for you. Yep. They have a price line of like four fifty, all the way to forty two. So it doesn't matter your budget. Yep. It doesn't matter your flavor profile. They have a cigar for you. And if you sign up and go through the passport, make your journey through turning your passport to McAuliffe, they give out. I don't even know, hundreds of dollars every month to people who do the passport program? They do, yeah. Dude, do you realize that Brian yes. has won over $1,500? It's, 
He's one lucky guy. Dude, you get to spend that any way you want at your home shop. Yeah. You don't have to even buy McAuliffe cigars. They just want to say thank you for smoking through their cigars. Right. And you can go buy anything you want. So check out the link in the show notes. Go check out the passport program. And then also look for the ambassador program yes. because you'll get your own challenge coin. I'm number 298. Oh, that's low. Bryant's 165. Jeez, man. I got mine first, but he's 165. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 6,000 and something. My son is 12,000 and oh, something. Oh, yeah. They've gotten up there. Yeah, they're way up there. Jeez. And they have a Facebook group mm -hmm. that you can join in on, talk yep. about this brand, and talk about anything else. Yep. You know, McAuliffe has a really strong social media presence. They do. They do a ton of live yep. videos, and they invite people from all different cigar brands. They're not like... Smoke McAuliffe and only McAuliffe. Yeah. They're like, hey, Matt Booth, come on over. See, I'm not even that way. <laughs> now, I will tell you this. For you that don't know, I am a huge fan. Huge. What Trump say? Huge. <laughs> fan of the bald booth. Bald booth is doing amazing things. If you don't know Bald Booth, be on the lookout because we're going to be like showcasing some Bald Booth, not 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 what's his name Matt Booth, but yeah. Bald Booth. Bald Booth. Okay. Bald Booth. All right. Anyway, man, that's going to wrap. Oh, you know, we didn't talk about bad cigars. Oh yeah. Bad construction. Yeah, we kind of touched up on. I mean, bad construction ninety percent of the time. It's if you're not going to give a shit about the construction. I don't think you give shit about your cigars. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. 100%. You could have the all-time best blend ever, but if you got bad construction, I don't give a shit. Yep. Yep. So that's a bad cigar, people. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. And until next time, keep smoking. Boom. Later. <laughs>